All right, good evening everyone and welcome to the meeting today. I hope you can all hear me. Um, please, I'll proceed immediately, okay? We are looking at futures trading and, and how to make money with it, okay? Um, I've often said that, um, or told us here that the way you make money, okay, in the crypto space, there is a short-term means of making money in the crypto space and then there's a longer-term means of making money in the crypto space, okay? If you want to invest in crypto and then um, you want to do that for a long-term purpose and then get the return, okay, you just put in your money in some crypto asset, all right, and then hope that in 10, 5 years, 20 years from now that you can actually get a good return from it. That is a long-term investment. That is investing in crypto. You buy into a project and then you wait for that project to actually appreciate and then you get your money. But if you want to be making money on a daily basis, okay, the best way to do that is to go ahead and trade. You can trade. Um, there are all um, styles of trading, crypto. We don't have margin trading, spot trading, you know, stuff like that. And it, it continues that way, okay? But majorly, um, the one that is faster and quicker for most of us who might be experienced in this area is futures, okay? The reason for futures trading is because um, if you are looking for to make a return, a, a, a good return on a daily basis, okay, you need a large capital to trade crypto. If you don't have that large capital, then you need to, you know, use leverage. Leverage is you borrowing the money you don't even have, okay, with your um, hundred dollars, for instance. Okay, when you are using leverage, let's say you are using 10x leverage, it means that you can get 10 times that amount of money um, that you have to trade. Okay, because you are getting 10 times the amount of money you have to trade, it means that if you are making profit, instead of making profit of the initial capital, which is the hundred dollar, you're not making profit of a um, thousand dollars, okay, which is the leverage, which is what you now have because of the leverage, the size of the leverage you are using, okay. So um, today I'll be demonstrating, I've been sending signals, okay, to the platform, and most people don't even understand the signals, okay? I've made a video previously on YouTube. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, do that because you gain a lot from there, okay? I made a video explaining all of this, but I want to go through it again in this meeting. And after that, I'll allow you to ask questions with any area you're confused with, okay? And then we'll look at, you know, um, some of the tips on how to trade features efficiently and make money. Um, um, from it on a daily basis, okay? So um, I sent out this, um, this signal today for the Dogecoin, okay? And then the instrument, once again, is Dogecoin USDT, all right? So it is Doge USDT. And my opinion means the direction which I am projecting that the market will be facing, okay? This is what I'm predicting that the market will face. So I am... Looking at, after making, um, doing all of the analysis, I, I, I feel that the market will continue to go down, okay? That Dogecoin will continue to go down. And I'm saying the entering price will be this 0 0.0618, okay? And then you can put your stop loss at 0 0.0738. And then your take profit, okay? SL is for stop loss and then TP is for take profit. The take profit is 0 0.0408, all right? And then the risk setting is always 1%, meaning that you are risking 1% of your account balance, whatever amount of money you have on your official trading account, you are going to be risking 1%. That is what this risk setting simply means, okay? You are risking 1% of that, all right? And then your risk reward ratio is always one um, to three. This risk reward ratio is already calculated, okay, in this um, price. Whatever you are going to risk in your trade, okay, it means that if it hits your target of take profit, you are making two times or three times that amount, okay, that you are going to be risking. That is exactly what it means. All of this has been calculated in the trade already, okay? So when you get this trade, when you get this signal like this, first you look at the entering price. Now the instrument is Dosh USDT. So if I go to my exchange, okay, first I want to come and select that instrument, which is Dosh. Okay, so you type in Dosh, and then um, sorry that went off Dosh 
So Dodge USDT, you go ahead and open up the chat. Okay, so once it opens up, now I am looking at this market on the 15 minutes time frame. Okay, this time around, you're not gonna be doing that much of technical analysis, but it is required that you look at the market yourself to actually see the direction the market is going. Now, the entering price I've given you here is that you should enter at 0 0.0168, okay? And what is the current price of Dosh right now? It is now currently trading at 0 0.06342, okay? My, my entering is 0 0.0618, but the current price right now is at the time of having this meeting with you, I believe when I sent this signal, it was around this, um, this um, you know, entering point, okay? Now, right now, it is at 0 0.06342, which is above or higher than what the entering price have projected um, initially, okay? So if you must enter this trade right now, you have to use a limit order. Limit order in the sense that you are projecting or entering the market that we the hope that the market will come down to this my entering point here. If it comes down to this my entering point, then your trade will be triggered and then you'll be waiting to take profit here. Now, one thing I need to say on the take profit, the fact that I've calculated take profit there doesn't mean that when your trade is in 1%, 2% in profit, you shouldn't take profit. You must not wait until it gets to the target, okay? If you don't have that patient, you must not wait until it gets to the target. So if you must get to the target, then you have to use trailing stop to prevent you losing money or you adjust your stop loss further, okay? So now where I say Dogecoin trade signal, in bracket, I added that it is a swing trade. Swing trade meaning that you may not be hitting your target today. This can take days for it to hit your target. It can take up to a week or more to, for it to hit your target. That is why it is a swing trade, okay? It is a swing trade, meaning that the analysis was not just done on 15 minutes time frame, but on a higher time frame, okay? Because the statistics you get when you look at the chart right now on a, um, a lower time frame is not the same statistic you get when you look at it on a higher time frame. So higher time frame meaning that we'll look at it from the four hours or to the daily time frame, all right? So what this simply means is a swing, meaning that if it is a swing trade, meaning that your profit may not be today. So you can enter this market today, you can enter this trade today. For instance, those who enter the trade at 0 0.0618, if it didn't take profit, maybe if you did not take profit when it was a bid in profit before you started reversing back, your trade will be in losses right now. So you'll be seeing um your your profit my negative a certain amount of money depending on what the amount of money you actually risk on that trade okay so you'll be seeing some negative um um usdt or thereabout in your trade right now okay because it is a string trade it is normal even if it is intraday trade it is normal that when you enter because of the ups and downs of the market the market will always go against you before going in your favor all right so if you can no longer bear the losses you are looking at the screen, that is when it is advised to put your stop loss. Please always accept stop loss. Always accept losses in the crypto space it, when trading features. If you have made up your mind that you will not accept losses, then you are not ready to progress, okay? The fact that you lose a trade today doesn't mean that you will not win it tomorrow, all right? So please always accept losses in a trade. So what we do right now, if I'm going to place this trade, now that I've opened up Dodge USDT, okay? This time around, because the price is above what I say the entering price should be, I'm going to use limit to enter this trade, okay? So this is where the market is trading right now. I'm going to use the limit um, order to enter this trade. So all I do is come in here to my trade and then select limit, okay? First, make sure that you are on the isolated mode, all right? I've told us different between cross and isolated. So make sure you are always on the isolated mode. As a beginner, make sure you are always on the isolated mode, okay? So I'll go ahead and confirm this, all right? When I confirm this, I'll go ahead and use click on limit. When I click on limit, the price here, I will remove it and put the price that I've given to you, 0 0.0618. That is going to be our entering price, okay? Now, how much are you ready to risk 
in this trade? How much are you ready to risk in this trade? Now on the Binance exchange, you can calculate this in USDT or you calculate it in, in the particular coin you are trading. So on the USDT here, you see that there is an arrow tap here. If I click on the arrow, they drop down. I can do that for the Dogecoin itself or do it for the USDT itself, okay? So for instance, if I go ahead and put in 1,000 USDT here, all right? I'm going to short this market. So if I go ahead and put in 1,000 USDT and I scroll down here, this is what you want to pay attention to. So be, beneath the open long or open short position, you see how much it's going to cost you. If I am going to be trading, the leverage here is 20X leverage, okay? Um, if I'm using 20X leverage. So if I'm going to open this position worth 1,000 USDT, how much will it cost me? My initial margin is going to be, if I long the market, is going to be 49, that's approximately 50 USDT. If I'm shorting the market, it is going to cost me 70 or approximately 71 USDT, okay? This is what you want to pay attention to, not the amount you put in here. This is the amount we are using because we are using leverage, okay, 20 years leverage. It's going to cost us just um, either 50 or 71 to just open a position worth 1,000 USDT, all right? So once you put in this, the next thing is to check your take profit and stop loss. This option, if it is off by default, okay, if it is off by default, go ahead and check it. When you check it, it will open up this take profit column and the stop loss column. Then what I will now do is, what did I say the stop loss is? This is the stop loss, okay? So go ahead and copy it and put it on the column for the stop loss, okay? And then you equally put in the figure for the take profit here copy it and put on the take profit column, all right? So once I put in this, remember in the trade signal here, I say sell, okay, or short, all right? Because I say sell or short, it means that we're going to use this red button to open a short position. So I'll go ahead, once I fill in all of these details, I'll go ahead and open short position. So it triggered immediately. In this case, you don't have to do anything. When it triggers immediately, um, you can see that it is already in profit. All right, so if it continues to go down, I may be closing this trade earlier than I did. But always make sure that you use limit order when the price is against, um, above what the entering price is, or you use the market order immediately to execute that market, that, that order immediately, okay? Now that I've added this, you see that my take profit and stop loss are all indicated here, okay? So the take profit and stop loss are all indicated here. So if I go ahead and click on edit, so I can now equally, even when the trade is already placed, I can still edit the take profit and the stop loss. For instance, if I go ahead and put the take profit here, which is this. So if I copy this and put on my take profit column here, just paste that. So what this is simply saying is that if this market gets to this level, okay? If actually gets to this level, we're going to be making around 388. Okay, that is if he hits that um, level, then the stop loss, how much will this cost us if he hit this level? Okay, so if I copy this and put on the stop loss column, okay, we're going to lose 119, um, 109, that is 199 USDT. This is what we're going to lose if he hit that stop loss. Okay, and then if he hit that take profit, we're going to be making this. All right, so I just go ahead and click on confirm. So once I click on confirm, just now the market um, is actually going against us. All right, so once I click on confirm, that will be there. But what you now need to do is to pay attention to this, okay? To pay attention to this. When this goes in your favor, okay? When this goes in your favor, even if it is $20, $30, even if it doesn't hit your target, Okay, and then you notice that the market is going against you. All you just need to do is to come in here and close the trade. Okay, you come in here and close the trade and that trade will be closed, all right? So basically that, that is how you monitor this trade or that is how you enter the trade or the signals that I send out to the group. You just come into your Binance account or your exchange, any exchange you are using, go in there and then um, just open that trade using a limit or market order, okay? and then wait for the trade to go in your favor. When it goes in your favor, 
even if it is a swing trade and you don't want to, to um, leave that trade to, to the whole day, once it is in your favor, close the trade. Okay, once it is, it is in your favor, close the trade, and then you go ahead and um, um, wait for another opportunity to enter the market, all right? So basically, this is what, and another thing you need to do before you enter any trade to actually start calculating, there is every exchange has a calculator attached to it. So it, uh, here on the Binance, if I click on this um, icon here, where the price, my um, account balance is, if I click on it, it opens up this calculator, okay? What a calculator does is that you can use it to calculate your profit, you can use it to calculate your target price, you can use it to calculate your liquidation price, the maximum open and then the open price and the rest. You can use it to calculate all of this. Now, since we are doing for Dogecoin and then we'll say short position, all we need to do, let's say as I select 10X leverage, okay? If I select 10X leverage, what was that entering price again? The entering price is this. So you go ahead and click on this to add up that entry price here. Okay. And then the exit price will be the take profit. Okay. The take profit level is this. So go ahead and enter this to your exit price. Okay. So once you enter it, what is the quantity of USDT you are trading? It could be USDT in your own case or Dogecoin, the coin you are trading. So whatever you see, whether it is USDT or the coin, just go ahead and put in the number you want to trade. For instance, if I say I want to open a trade worth 1,000 um, USDT, okay, and I go ahead and click on calculate, it means that for me to enter a position worth 1,000, it is going to cost me $100, okay, $100. And then the ROE will be around 390, 339. So if it is 339, it means that I'm going to make $339 as profit. So what it simply means, because I am risking $100, and then using 10x leverage, this ten hundred dollars, ten times this hundred um, by hundred by ten will give me this one thousand dollars that I added here. Okay, meaning that whenever the market moves one percent in profit, I am making one dollar. When it moves two percent in, 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 in my favor, I am making two dollars. When it moves five percent in my favor, I am making five dollars. The same thing applies if it moves against you. Okay, if it moves against you by twenty percent, it means that. For the $100 you are risking, you're actually losing $20. If you move against you by 10%, you're losing $10, $10 and it continues that way, okay? So what if I say, no, I don't want to risk this amount, high amount of money and I put in, let's say, 500, okay? And I go ahead and calculate. It means that for the position I'm going to open, it will cost me $50, okay? And then when it moves in my favor, okay, when it hits this target of 0 0.0408, um, which is around 339%, I am making this amount of money, okay? What if I say, okay, let me just use $100, okay, and calculate. It means that it will cost you $10 because you are using 10 x leverage. It will cost you $10 to open this position. And if it goes in your favor with risking $10, you are making $33, okay? This is how you calculate. You, the same thing applies if you want to do it for a long position, you just come in here to the long position and then open, you know, put in your entering price and then your exit price. Go ahead and put in the amount you are ready to risk and get the calculation and that will give you all of the details here. All right? So if you want to calculate for liquidation, the same thing applies. All right? You come in here, you add the entering price, you add the quantity of USDT and then the balance by default, it will just pull up your balance from your account. Okay, or you can just go ahead and add whatever balance you have. For instance, if you have $100, it will give you where you'll be liquidated and so on, okay? So I just wanted to share this with you. Then I can now take your questions related to um, anything, features trading and so on. So you can ask questions wherever you get confused, uh, whatever you get confused with, okay? Um, you can ask your questions and I'll be able to, you know, answer those questions accordingly. So um, if you have any question, just indicate by raising your hand, okay? Or you use the chat section, indicate by raising your hand, okay? All right, so we start with uh, Tista, I guess um, I pronounced that well. Tista, yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself and make your contributions. Okay, sir, good evening, sir. Thanks for the value, sir. We appreciate you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, sir. So uh, what I want to get now is that I want to know how do you get your stop loss, take profit, take profit. How do you analyze the market? 
So that is what I want to know, sir. How do you analyze the market to know to get uh, the take profits and the all those things, sir? Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and zoom out this. Um, remember, this is my Binance Exchange, okay? And then I am on the Trading View chat. All right. So I'll go ahead and zoom this out so that you'll be able to see um, my chat very well. Okay. So when I zoom this out, we are on the Dogecoin. All right. And right now I'm looking at Dogecoin on the four hours time frame. Let's say I want to scalp the market. I just go to the 15 minutes time frame. Okay. When I go to the 15 minutes time frame, I've taught you how to use one of these indicators, which is RSI. Okay. Here you see that my RSI is plotted here. So if I go ahead and hover over the RSI and click on the setting, if I come to the input, the length here is 14, okay? And then it is, I've always set my own RSI. Um, the upper band is always 80, okay? The upper line here, which is yellow, the one indicated with yellow. And then the lower band is always 20, all right? This is what I, I used to determine. These are the numbers I used to determine when the market is overbought. And then when the market is oversold, all right? So the basic way I use this RSI is that I come in here when this RSI is trading, okay? When the line, the, this is the RSI line, okay? Let me go ahead and change that to white so that you'll be able to see it very well. This is my plot line here. So I change it to white, okay? I can make the line thicker if I want. And then um, go ahead and click on okay. All right. So the basic way I use this is when the market, this is on the 15 minutes time frame, meaning that this movement in the market happened today. Okay. This is not today. This is yesterday. Today is 29th. Yeah. This is yesterday. This happened yesterday. All right. So what I basically do is when this RSI is trading here on this red line, this red line, um, the, the, your own could be, maybe you don't, if you don't change the color, it may not be there, but the lower line here, the lower band here, this line indicated with red is my oversold level. Whenever this RSI line comes down here and touches this and even go beyond the line here, it means that the market is oversold. And whenever the market is oversold, what RSI is telling you is that any moment from now, there could be a reverse in the market, okay? There could be a reverse in the market, which is what happened here, okay? This actually traded up to this level, all right, remained there for some time, and then started pulling up. You see that from here, it pulled up, up to this level where it is. So, meaning that at this level now, the market is equally approaching the oversold level. So, it is approaching the oversold level. When it hits the, over, sorry, the overbought level, the upper band is overbought, the lower band is, um, line is oversold. So, when it hit the overbought level, there is every probability that the market will start reversing back again, come down again, and then it goes up again. That is just the movement of the, in the market, okay? Let's say I saw this trade moving um, down here, all right? So when it started moving down here, I then noticed that, oh, I'm going to enter this trade now that it's um, trading at this level, okay? So I'll wait for a green candle, a bullish candle to appear to actually um, proof that this is going to be a, a bull um, you know, movement in the market. There's going to be a bull movement in the market, okay? What I now do is there is a two here, please, okay? This helps you to calculate your entering level, your take profit level, your stop loss and the rest. If you are going to short the market, you use the short position too. If you are going to long the market, you use the long position too. Now, this is already overbought. So when it is overbought, I am going to long the market in this case, all right? So I'll come in here to this two and then click on the long position two and then just click on my chart. It will be added here, okay? Let's say this candle appeared and I decide not to enter on this candle. Let me zoom this out so that you'll be able to see it, okay? When this candle appeared, I decided not to, this is today, okay? This movement started today. When this candle appeared, I decided not to enter this, on this candle. Let's say I decided to enter from this next candle. What I need to do is to come in here, bring this here, okay? So once I bring this here, let me bring it up a bit. This is my going to be my entry level, this middle line here. Remember, there is a demarcation between this red bar, the red bar and the green bar. This demarcation here, this middle line is going to be my entry level, all right? So I will now say, okay, 
this market, how long am I going to remain in this market? When should I take my profit and the rest? Okay, with this, I cannot drag this up. Okay, now what I want you to pay attention to, the more I drag this up, I want you to pay attention to these numbers in the bracket. Okay, this one's in bracket here. All right, this is the percentage at which the market will need to move for me to make profit in the market. Okay, it means that if you move up to this level where we are right now, it is 2% plus. Okay, what if it continues to move up? That is over 2.3%. Um, all right. And then here I can bring my stop loss up a bit. Let's say I want to reach just 1% of my capital. Okay. So in the bracket here, you see 1%. Why? Um, let me zoom this out a bit. Okay. Let me just follow it to where it started retracing back somewhere here. All right. Somewhere around here. It means that if I follow this trend up here, it means that the market has moved by 4.2%. Okay. 4.2%, depending on the leverage you are using, could make you a, a, a whole lot of money. Now, when I plot this into my graph, okay, into my chart, once I plot this uh, position two into my chart, okay, when you click on it, this is going to be your take profit. The green buy, I don't know if you can see it, okay? This green um, line here, because this one, when you follow it here, this is going to be your take profit, all right? So this is where you are going to set your take profit. And then the red one here is going to be where you are going to set your stop loss. This one doesn't really matter because if you use market order, you may not be needing this. Except you are going to use limit order. That is when you not need. This is going to be your entry. Okay. This is going to be your entry. The one in gray uh, will, will be your entry, which is this middle line here that is dividing the red bar from the, um, the, the, the green bar. Okay. Why this one here? Because this is where our green went to will be our take profit and then our stop loss will be this one okay so this is the number you are going to plot into your chart okay for, so if i now minimize this let's say i'm going to take this trade if i'm going to take this trade all i just need to do let me minimize the chart so let it load up so that i'll just show you how to do okay so this is what we are going to use to uh, you know make our judgment in the market um, so all I need to do, our entering will be, I'm going to use market order, okay? So when I use, let's assume that this happened right now, okay? I'm going to use market order. So it means that I don't really need to do that. Then on the take profit level, take profit level will not be this 0 0.030636. You go ahead and put that here, okay? 0 0.0636, okay? 636. A, um, three eight right three eight okay so then your stop loss will not be the one in red just um the one in red will not be 0 0.06 um 0 043 and the rest you go ahead and put in and put up that here 0 0.0 you know um six zero um three seven all right, so once you put in that, you go ahead. Now, remember, it is a long position. We are going to open along the market. So you go ahead and use this of our long position, okay? Now, when you use market order, the size of USDT will not determine. If I do 1,000 here, okay, I am using USDT. For instance, in your own case, it may be the particular coin you are trading. So this is this Doge. If I change it to Doge, okay, if I change it to Doge, I can go ahead and say, okay, I want to trade 4,000 Doge, okay? So if I put in 4,000 Doge, it will cost us just thirteen dollars to open a long position. What if I say ten thousand dollars? Okay, so if it is ten thousand dollars, it means that it will cost us thirty-three dollars to open a long position or thirty-three to open a short position. Okay, what if you say it is twenty thousand dollars you want to actually trade? Okay, so twenty will cost you sixty-seven, and then it will cost you sixty-seven to open either a long or short position. You go ahead and open the position, and that is it. Okay. The next thing you now need to do is to monitor your trade when it goes in profit, even if it, is, it doesn't hit up to, if you are not patient enough to follow the market until it hits your take profit level, then if it is, if it moves in your favor, 1%, 2% or thereabout, you go ahead and take profit. Okay, you go ahead and take profit. Now, this is 20x leverage. If I go to the calculator here, let's um, look at, um, what we had there is that it's 4% plus, right? This is 4.2%, okay? So using 20 years leverage, if I go to the calculator and then we open a short position, we are using 20 years leverage. 
So if we enter a, 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 a long position at that, can someone give me that? The long position is 0 0.063, okay? Okay, no, no, we entered at 0 0.061. Then we want to take profit at 0 0.063. So if I open this again and um, say our entry price is 0 0.061, I guess, okay? And then we want to exit at 0 0.063, okay? And then we are trading like, um, using 20S leverage, we are tra trading like, how many dollars did I put there? 20,000, 20,000 dollars. So I'll go ahead and calculate, okay? So I'll go ahead and calculate. Now that 4% move in the market will not give you around 65 ROE, okay? 65 ROE percent, and then that would have made you, because this is costing us just $61. Okay, if it moves in our favor to this level, we are making around $40, risking just $61. Okay, risking $61, we are going to be making $40 in the market if it moves in our favor. And this actually is a win trade. This movement you see in the market is a win trade, and that would have made you profit. Okay, so you wait again and look for when the market is overbought, just like we saw here. So if I go ahead and expand this again. So here, the market is overbought. You see the RSI shooting above 80. So it even went to 87 and above, okay? Once it is overbought, you want to confirm that the next candle will be you know, a bearish candle. So because the candle is going to be red and it's going to close in red and the rest, this will give you a signal to take a short position. So what do you do? You go to your two, use the short position to plot it to your graph, um, to your chart, okay? So if I um, bring this down here, I want to soak here, I want to enter the market somewhere around here, okay? So I'll bring down my stop loss to around 1% or 1 point something percent or thereabout. Okay, then bring my take profit to around um, 4% plus, okay? 4%, this would have equally played out, all right? This would have been, this is a win trade and this would have equally made you profit in the market. It is as simple as that. I don't know if this is understood. I, I just have to use the RSI, but there are other indicators which going forward, okay? Maybe in our next meeting, hopefully by tomorrow, I'll show you how to use the MACD um, and then, Gradually, we'll be using combinations of these indicators. There are hundreds of indicators. Some are paid, some are free. But with the free indicators, you can actually start using them to make decisions in the market, okay? Decisions in the market that can be making you profit, all right? You don't really need, as you can see the calculations I'm doing here, with $60, with $70, all you just need to, be, uh, to do is to be patient in the market, okay? To be patient. But just know that whenever the market is overbought, there will be definitely there will be you know um a, a reverse movement in the market that will go in, in the opposite direction and when it goes all right then you can go ahead and take your trade okay yes um tista go ahead uh, okay um I, th I thought you wanted to say something else yes sir thank you sir it's clear now Thank you so much, sir. All right, you're welcome. Any other question? So if you have questions, contributions to make, go ahead and you know make your input. Yes, um, Mr. Dan, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, so good evening, sir. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. So actually, uh, using Android phone, how do we set up the RSI? When I click the, on the RSI, it show me three lines. So I don't know, and the, the shape or the movement of the RSI is not as clear as this one. So how do I set it to appear like this? Secondly, uh, as a beginner, when I want to set my 
future trading by default it is in on cross so if i want to change it to isolate the thing will not after putting it in isolate i click confirm it will go back to a cross so this setting has been a a big deal to me sir please help me All right. Um, I believe there are no much difference um, using the Binance app on the Android and the, on the on iPhone. Okay, I don't I don't use iPhone. By the way, um, if you have not, uh, uh, if you don't have a Binance account, the Binance uh, iPhone giveaway is still on. If you want to have an iPhone, okay, um, the giveaway is still on. Just sign up for a Binance account using my link and then you could stand a chance to qualify for the iPhone giveaway. Okay, so I'll just share my, my app and then show you. Um, please get your uh, app ready, okay? Just open it up and then follow these settings the way because the RSI, definitely the RSI on the app is different from the RSI on the on the on the laptop or the web version of it. So there, there are differences in, in, in using them. So um, okay. So I'm trying to get my phone to to make that work. All right. Yes, so when we go to the features trade, all right. So you want to click to open up the chat. I believe you can, you know, get to where I am right now, opening up the chat and the rest. So if you click to open up the chat, all right? Yes. So once you click to open up the chat, this um, RSI you're seeing here, all of this that you're seeing here, um, if it is not highlighted, this one is highlighted, that is why you're seeing, the Bollinger Bands is highlighted, that's why you're seeing it on the chat. The RSI is highlighted, that's why you're seeing it. Anyone that is grayed out, okay? All these ones that are grayed out, are not showing up, okay? Now, what I can do, yes. let's say I want to add um, volume. I just click on the volume, okay? Because I've clicked on it and it's highlighted, it will just pop up, all right? So if I want the yes. bowling advance to go off, I just click on it, it goes off. If I want the volume to go off, I'll click on it, it goes off, okay? Now, by default, if you are adding the RSI for the first time, you have three lines. Definitely on the app, you will have three lines. So how do you do that? The next thing you want to do is to come in here to this setting icon. Okay, these two, uh, whether it's arrow or I don't know, this is the setting icon for your, uh, like your preference icon. Go ahead and click on it. So once you click on it, you want to click on where it says indicators, this one. Okay, so yes. click on it. So once you click indicators, these are all the indicators that are available for you to use on the phone. All right, now the RSI is the one we have business with. So we're going to set up the RSI. So I'll just click on the RSI. So by default, all of these will be checked. All right, the RSI um, one, two, three, okay. And then the value, the value are always different. You see the value as um, 14, um, you know, it's, it would be six, 14, 12, or whatever, but I can't really say. Okay, but I had to set up mine. That is why you see all of them are all 14. But you need to uncheck all of them and use the one that is 14. Whatever RSI you see there that is 14, where the value is 14, use that one. Okay, that's the RSI okay. you are going to use. So this one is 14. You can change the color by just clicking here. All right, if you want to change the color to whatever you feel like. So let's say I want to change mine to, these are the colors that are available on your phone. You can change it to yellow or something. If I change it, if you want to make it um, bolder, you can select and select any other one, okay? Um, and then right. go ahead and click on confirm. If you click on confirm, use the arrow to go back. And then when you go back, you see that the RSI has been applied, okay? Now, this is a yes. phone, you are using a, a, a device, so it should not be as accurate as you wanted it to be. But what you want to pay attention to is this number here, okay? Because here on the phone, okay. you will not see the line that is the upper band or the line that is the lower band. You will not see them clearly here, right? But you want to pay attention yes. to this number, okay? 
So now the RSI is facing down because it is facing down. It means that the RSI has moved down to around 30. Remember, I set up my RSI as what? 80 and what? And 20. 20. That is on the desktop, not on the phone here, but on the phone by default, on the app by default, it is 70 and 30. So if the RSI okay. go below 30, it is overbought. If it goes above 70, it is oversold, okay? So you want to always pay attention to this number that you're seeing here, okay? So when it is 20 something, 15, 10, then you are ready to long the market, okay? Then when it is, you know, 70, 80, 90, going up that way, you are ready to short the market, short okay? The market. Whatsoever you are doing, make sure that, because the RSI, these are the time frame. Right now, the time frame we are looking at is on the one day time frame, meaning that every candle here represents one day. Please yes. take note, before you start even looking at RSI, make sure that you look at the time frame because the number here, what the RSI is giving you or the signal is giving you here on the daily time frame, it is different from the four hours time frame. It is different from the one hour time frame. It is different from 15 minutes time frame and even different from five minutes time frame. Okay? So you want to yes. pay attention to that. So if you are just here to scalp the market, just trade today before the day, today ends, you want to exit the market, you go ahead and click on 15 minutes, okay? Or you can click on where it says more, all right? Click on where yes. it says more and then choose five minutes, okay? So this you are seeing here is five minutes. On the five minutes time frame, it is telling us that the RSI is at the is 36 going down. So we'll wait for it until when it comes 20 something, 21, 20, and then we'll look for an opportunity to long the market on okay. the phone. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I, I believe that is it. Um, is that clear enough for you? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Very clear. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can unmute yourself and make your contributions. Okay. Hello, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, welcome. Thank you, sir. So please, when, when you set your, your stop, take profit and stop, is it stop and um, your take uh, take profit and stop loss, will you still come back to be monitoring the trade or once the trade and it's in, and it, you take profits and the your stop loss reach reaches the, your distance expires to just the trade is short on its own, or you have to come back again and come and start setting it up again. Now, 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 what why you need to check your trade um, very often is that when you open a trade, at some time the trade will go in your favor. Okay, maybe let's say you open a trade and right now it is going in your favor. You are seeing like you're making $10, $20 in your favor, but it has not hit your target yet. There is every mm. probability that that trade will reverse back. Okay, oh. a trade will reverse back and something that was in profit of $10, $20 will not be negative $10, $20 and stuff like that. So when it happened like that, you know, most especially for beginners trader, you begin to buy it yourself that, oh, I saw this in profit. Why did I not close it? And the rest, forgetting that because it's going against you now, it will still come in your favor back again. All right? So okay. um, what in that case, what you do, if you saw, you see, you, when you check your trade and you see that it is in profit, all you just need to do is to adjust your stop loss. All right? Okay. Your stop yes, loss will not you now bring your stop loss to the entering price, the, the 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 price at which you enter the market at that point in time. Okay, you bring mm -hmm. it to the entering price, and then your take profit can still be where it is. Or let's say if it is um, I don't know how to explain this. If the the market is um already, let's say we enter this market, um, this is Bitcoin, right? At yes. um we entered at 19,700. Okay. And then our take profit is at 21,000, right? Now, right now from 19,700, it is currently trading at 20,000, okay? Because it is trading at 20,000, it means that we're already in profit halfway, right? But our target is 21,000. So instead of leaving it here from this 20,000, it can come down again to 19,000 or even 18,000. 
So what we want to do to secure our profit is to remove our stop loss. Let's say our stop loss was somewhere in 17,000. We'll remove our stop loss to, our entering price was 19,700. So we can remove our stop loss and bring it to 19,900, okay? So if for any reason this market continues to go down, instead of going to hit our stop loss, it will now hit that 19,900. In that 19,900, we are still making profit because we entered at 19,700. So we are still making profit depending on the amount or the leverage you are using. You can still make profit from the, let's say I'm using 100, I'm risking $100. It means that when the market moved from 19,000, um, 700 to 19,900, I could be making, depending on the leverage, maybe $5, $10 or thereabout. So instead of losing completely, you have made money, you have secured that. Then you wait again for a good opportunity to open the market. That is how, why you need to monitor your trade to adjust your stop loss, or you use what we call trailing stop. Okay, trailing, uh, maybe we'll take our time to um, uh, look at how the trailing stop on Binance or any other exchange works and how to use them. I don't know if that is clear. Yes, I understand you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Please. Okay, you're welcome. So Mr. Tony, um, you can unmute yourself and make your contributions. Yeah, good evening, well done. <coughs> good evening. Uh, just a contribution to the speaker before this very last one. There's um, what he asked, I think he didn't get there, maybe you, you didn't get him. He was asking if uh, the about uh, the cross and isolated mode that he can he's not able to change it. Yes, I yes, yes. Say, I if, forgot. If, if uh, maybe maybe you should check if his uh, setting is on multi asset mode, he will not be able to change it, except you change it back to single uh, single mode. Because yes. if it is not a multi asset mode, it should be able to it should be it should be able to change from. Uh, uh, sing, uh, isolated to cross. If you are not able to change it, that is to say, you have set your, you have put your setting on multi-asset mode and multi-asset mode must be on cross cross only and not isolated. All right. Thank you so much for that observation. And uh, Mr. Dan, to show you that, okay, you need to come in here to, um, this is blocking my view. So you need to come in here to this three dot on your app, okay? This is the three dot to set up your trade on your app, all right? So when you click on the three dot, if I go ahead and click on it, you want to click on where it says preferences, okay? So click on preferences. And when you click on preferences, you want to come down here to where it says asset mode, okay? It should be on single asset mode so that you'll be able to, um, you know, um, switch from cross to um, isolated and so on. But if you click on this and it is um, showing you that instead of um, uh, being on um, single, okay, the single asset mode is the one that is checked here. Instead of being here, if your own is on multi asset mode, change it from here to the single asset mode and you'll be able to now change between cross and isolated. But if it is on multi asset mode, Okay, you'll not be able to change it from cross, um, from cross to isolated. Okay, it can only remain on cross, just like um, Tony just observed. All right, and the advantage of using multi-asset mode is that if I have 100 USDT, remember on Binance, you can trade BTC against BUSD, Ethereum against BUSD. So if I have $100 on my account, I can trade BUSD pairs, and I can trade USDT pairs. That is what the multi-asset mode simply does. And it can only work with the cross mode, okay? But if you just want to trade only USDT pairs, then use the single asset mode. And then that way you can change from cross to isolated and vice versa, all right? Thank you for that observation, very important. So for um, all of you who are doing that, you can equally change that as well, okay? All right, so I, I have someone here asking, in OKS, can we have um, take profit one, two, three on a single entry? Take profit one, two, three on a single entry. Now, let me show you something again. Um, let me share my screen, my laptop screen, and show you how to set up the take profit one, two, three, okay? So if you have different take profit levels in your, 
in your trade. Let me minimize this. And um, go to this trade that is already running. Okay, so if I go to the take profit and I did this, all right, okay, let me cancel them already so that I'll be able to edit. So go to open orders and then I'll just cancel all of this. Cancel all of them. So if I come in here to the position, all right, and I did the take profit level. So, um, okay, the slider is not available on Binance. <laughs> slider is not available on binance um i think on other exchanges you see where it says whether you select 100 percent or 20 percent or there about you select the percentage of what you want to take profit for okay that option is not available here you always see a slider when you put in your take profit level okay you always see a slider down here that says um let's say your take profit one is uh if you enter b if it is btc for instance if your take profit is at 21,000, 22,000, 23,000. So at 21,000, you can take 10% of the profit. All right. Meaning that if you are risking $1,000, it is only 10% of that that will be taken. All right. Why the trade is still running. And then at 22, it will not take 20% of whatever is remaining. At 23, it will not take either 100% and so on. So that is how you do that. Um, I, I, I can't be able to do, I'm not able to do that here um, on Binance, okay? Can't set that already. Maybe you can use trailing stop. Maybe it's because of the trailing stop. Okay, you can do trailing stop here, but I believe on other exchanges, you can do that. Yeah, you ask for OKX. Let me see if I can open up my OKS account to show you that. I think I have OKS on my phone. Okay, so this is my OKS app. Okay, I think the person that asked that question asks um, using OKS. So I already have a position, a trade already running. Okay, this is a trade, um, BTC. Okay, and then it is, um, uh, I did not set take profit. Okay, it is um, um, cross mode 3x leverage. And then um, I want to set that take profit now. Let's say you have take profit one, two, three, or four, or there about number of take profit you have. All I need to do to set the take profit is to click on this stop order. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click on the stop order. When I click on stop order, now I can now set up my, you know, either take profit, stop loss, okay, or you use trailing stop and the rest. So I want to go ahead and set take profit and stop loss. Okay, so let's say I want to take the first take profit at 21,000. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put in 21,000 here. Then if you want to equally set stop loss, you can go ahead and set that up here, but you just take profit I'm concerned with, so I just leave it. And then say out of the, um, the trade that I'm risking, I just want to take, when you hit 21,000, I want to take 10% of it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click on 10%, as you can see here. Go ahead and click on 10% and then click on okay. Sorry. 10%, sorry, 10%, 10%. And then you go ahead and click on OK. So I'll click OK. All right. And then if you want to set for, um, OK, sorry, um, trigger price will be 21. OK, 21,000. So do go ahead and click on. Okay, so stop loss, let's say to stop loss will be at 18, 18,000. So it says, it says we must set, that is the first take profit. So if it hits 21,000, we take that. Then if you want to set the second take profit level, okay, you go ahead, this time around, I will set 50% and then you put, you know, the trigger price can be 23, okay, thousands, um, let's just equally do 23, okay. And then the stop loss will still be at that 18. All right. So this time around, we'll do 50%. All right. And then click on OK. So you go ahead. You see that I have two orders open here. So if I click on the open orders, I'll just need to scroll this. OK, scroll it down to the left. Then you see where it says stop orders. So when you click on stop orders, you see all of those that you're setting up here. All right. So if you want to set for the third uh, take profit level, you probably go ahead and do that as well. All right, that is how you set take profit one, two, three. We're using the percentage slider on your OKS account. I hope 
Um, that is clear enough for who asked the question. Okay, for Washington, I hope that is clear enough. Okay, Michael, say what's the difference between um, stochastic indicator and RSI? There are two different things. Okay, RSI um, 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 is slower. Now, the basic difference is that RSI is slower. Okay, the speed at which the stochastic indicator gives you signal is faster than the RSI. All right. So they are both oscillators, uh, but the, the speed at which this other one gives you signal is slower than the RSI. So if you want to be scalping the market, you know, using the stochastic oscillator, then you can use that instead of the RSI, okay? Is it possible to set only stop loss or take profit on a trade? Yes, it is possible. You can set only stop loss or take profit without setting stop loss and then set only now, in a case where you don't want to set stop loss, when you're using isolated mode, okay, when you're using isolated mode and then you're risking like $100 per trade, if you have made up your mind that even if the trade goes against you, you want to lose that $100, then there's no need of you setting stop loss, okay? But if out of that $100 you, you are risking in a trade, you want to like, so if the trade goes against me by minus $20, you want to stop, then you can put stop loss. So it's possible that you can set take profit without setting stop loss or set stop loss without setting take profit. Okay. All right. So um, the slider is on the app on the phone. Hmm? The slider is on the app. Um, sorry. I, I didn't get that. Yes, the slider is on the app. It's equally on the web version. Okay. It's equally on the, I'm using the app for the OKS. Do you mean for Binance? I don't know. Okay, if the slider is on Binance app, fine and good, that is good for you. Meaning that even if you place your trade using a laptop, since you have the app, you can always monitor your trade there, okay? So you can set up the take profit at level one, two, three using your Binance app um, going forward, all right? So thank you for that observation, um, okay? So any other person, um, Yisa, you wanna say something else, you can, Go ahead and unmute yourself or you just lower your hand. Any other question as regards this, go ahead. Okay. Any question related to this? Do we all understand everything we have explained there this evening? If we do understand, can you go and put it into practice and get results? Okay. Um, I, what, I, what I want is when we meet like this, I want to be getting, you know, um, things like, okay, I actually tried that, that stuff the other day, and then I made $5, I made $10, I made $20, okay? Uh, that way to help, uh, to help encourage me to know that, oh, the effort we are putting in is not, um, okay? So just try out a few of these things. If you have learned anything today, try that. Yes, Mr. Dan, you can unmute yourself. Try that and see how best you can use them, okay? If you face any challenge, when we come for the Zoom meeting, you ask some questions. Yes, go ahead. Okay, sir. It's all about the take profit and the, how to analyze it uh, from your from your candlestick, the moving trend. So you know the one you used to give us example is the past ones. So in case of the trending uh, market, how do you intend to analyze it like this before you can? short or you can long the market did you just join or you've been following all these things i've been explaining here okay yes i use past um candlestick now this is where the dodge coin this one we're looking at the chart you're looking at now is the dodge coin this is where the dodge coin is currently yes. trading okay this is the dodge yes. coin here and this is where my rsi is okay the RSI is neither here nor here. So right now I cannot take any trade. All I just need to do is to wait, okay? I need to wait for my yes. RSI to hit the overbought. When it hits the overbought level, I am looking for an opportunity to short the market, all right? So when it hits overbought yes. level, I will say, oh, any moment from now, this market will start reversing down. So I'll go ahead and short the market. When this RSI move down here to the oversold level, I will look for an opportunity to long the market. That is basically, that is just the basic analysis using RSI alone, okay? Or you use other indicators, like we've talked about other indicators, 
like um, super trend, which is another powerful um, good indicator that I use. Okay. Um, mm. I, there, there are a lot of them. Okay. There are a lot of them. But for now, just understand that the way you use the RSI. Now, this is where the current, the currently, this is where the RSI is trading. It is never, it is, it has not hit the overbought level. It has not hit the mm. oversold level. So wait. Okay. You wait. Okay. Now, yes. if you cannot wait or be checking out when it will hit, the next thing you need to do is just to get a trading view account. Okay. That is why I say everybody here yes. needs a trading view account. You go to your trading view and you set up an alert there. If you have not seen that video, on, uh, a video I made on trading view, go to trading view. Okay. And set up an alert on your phone, on your trading view account. All right. When you set up an alert on the trading view account, when the market now goes, or when the RSI is oversold, okay, when the RSI is at the oversold level, it goes ahead to give you a, a um, an alert. So it goes ahead and start beeping it down your phone, or you receive an email notification that oh, this market is overbought, or is oversold. Or, then you go ahead and make your decision and enter the market. All right, okay. I'm looking at BNB okay. on the five minutes time frame, okay? And I'm using um, the EMA, then this um, divergence indicator. So if I go ahead and add the RSI indicator, just type in RSI here. So I add it up to my chart, okay? So um, what I normally do again, go to the setting, all right? The input is always 14. Then here you want to make it 80. So I just make this one 80 and then make this one 20. Okay, so then I want to uncheck this RSI base MA. So uncheck this and then change this color to white. And then make it bolder. All right. So once you do that, that is all like, the settings I need to do. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Okay, so on the BNB, it has, right now, it is just in the middle. Like I cannot just make a decision. Like, even when I, I'm, I'm seeing that the market is going upward. Okay. I can't just take any decision yes. now because even from here, you can take a decision and then it goes against you immediately. All right. Uh, yes. Then, all, yes. but in this case, if I'm going to use edge mode to trade the market, I can open put a long and short position um, at, at this point. Okay. If you are using Binance, Binance allows you to do that. Once you activate the edge option, the edge mode option on your, on your Binance account, if you have not seen that video, go and see the video. I can open a long and short position at the same time. Now, the way I use edge mode to trade is that I just want to make one um, profit when the market moves in my favor by 1%. So I can risk 500 to go or the predicting that the market will go up, hit uh, risk 500 predicting that the market will go downward. So whenever it goes 1% upward, it takes profit. When it goes 1% downward, it takes profit just like that. And the boat trade can close and I'm, 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 I'm done for that day. I can go ahead. But right now, if you are going to do one way direction, then wait for the RSI to hit the overbought or the oversold level. Okay. So when you hit the oversold okay, level, you sir. can come in here and set a lot. Okay. Here on the, you see, I don't know if you can see this. This is the alert option mm -hmm. on your trading view. Yes. This one. Yes this uh, clock option. Yes. So go ahead and click on it and set up an alert. So if I go ahead and click on it, it will ask me to create an alert. So if I click on create an alert, now it will give you the condition. Is it, where do you want to set the alert? Is it on the BNB itself? You want to set it on this? Uh, it, remember I have three indicators there. The first one is this divergent for many whatsoever, okay, many indicators. You have the EMA 200 and then the RSI. So one thing I want to do is to select the RSI, okay? When I select the RSI, I want to set the, the, the um, alert when it crosses it up or when it crosses down, okay? But I'll just go ahead and leave it at crossing, okay? When I set it at crossing, you can either use um, the value here, okay? And just add whatever amount of money you want to add here and the rest, okay? or you do the crossing up, okay? Or you do crossing down, okay? Or you do crossing less mm. than, or crossing, you know, more than, Greater than, or crossing entering channel, exit channel, all of this option that is giving you, if it is moving up, if it is moving down by a certain percentage, you can go ahead and set all of this. And then the alert option will be notified on app. If you have the app on your phone, 
it will notify you on the app. Okay, show pop up. If the trading view is open on your laptop, it will show pop up. Okay, uh, beeping on your on your laptop. Okay, then it can equally send you an email that oh the alert you said has actually triggered, and you go ahead and place, um, go ahead and look at the chart and then take that order. Okay. Okay. okay yes. Sir. So that is how you can claim that you. Uh, with a real market time, uh, a view real time data in the market or so. Trend. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Joseph, you can uh, mute yourself to make your contributions. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, sorry. I want to ask a, a signal that you dropped. Is it, can we enter it? Can, is this still valuable? Yeah, the signal can. Um, sorry, let me look at this for hours. Yes, you can still enter the signal, but you need to use the limit order to enter the signal. Okay. Mm, you can still enter the signal, but use the limit order to enter the signal. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. BBF, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening to everybody. Yeah, good evening. Um, the last time we had a meeting, with the RSI, I have tried using the, as you may go to coin market cap, and I use the top gainers. So I set the RSI to 80, the upper base. It works for me. I use the time frame 15 minutes, it works for me. But when I change it to the down, the 20 lower base, I always don't get it accurate. So I just, wanted to ask you much about that one. But for the upper base, when I set it to 80, when it is over bought, oversold, sorry, I get it accurate. When I enter the market, I, I end up getting something in return. And when it's oversold, I go to top losers, I take a coin, and then I set a trade. I always don't get it accurate. So please, any help about that one? Um, I, I think I mentioned that here that um, you have to be careful when you are looking at the top losers and top gainers. It is easier for some of this altcoin you look at, okay, when they are gaining to drop. It is easier for them to drop than it is when they they are losing for them to you know spring up immediately. It is very difficult when a coin drops. It remains there for some time. Most especially when it is an old coin, any old coin that is not too popular that you don't know, anything outside Ethereum, BTC, BNB, some of these popular coins that you can think of. Okay, when you go to the, um, uh, the losers for that day or for the past 24 hours, please be selective of the coin you are going to trade because when they lose, when they drop, they can remain there for days, for months before they even start, you know, uh, resurrecting or waking up. But when they spring up, when any coin, any Dogecoin, whether it is new, it is old, any old coin you see that is um, around 50%, 100% in gain for that day, just give it 24 to 48 hours, it will definitely drop. Okay? It will definitely drop. So when you want to make your decision, if it is for top uh, losers, please be selective. Be selective. Look at the coin, no... The number of people who are trading in the trading volume they have every day. Okay, look at the past history. Did they spring up immediately when you know such things happens and the rest? You need to actually analyze that a lot. But I will not advise anybody to use top losers. If you don't know any coin, okay, you don't you have not studied the coin and you cannot follow or ascertain why they have dropped. Please don't do because um, once people dump their money from altcoin, they move to another project entirely. So don't use those losers to always want to enter the market, but you can do for Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of some of these popular coin, but not for every altcoin you see out there in the market. But any altcoin you see that has gained a lot in the market, there is every probability that it will definitely drop. Okay, so that way you, that is why you're always getting, you know, this other one right, and then the other one is not right, because when they dump, it is very difficult for them to actually reverse back and the rest.
All right. Any 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 other question as regards this? Okay. Um, what is the use of debt uh, on on Binance? Okay. Um, debt, debt, debt. This is um, just what you're saying on the candlestick. Okay. This is um, what it simply means is they fight between buyers and sellers. Okay. So the green people are the ones who are winning right now. That is why they are, you know, you're seeing their own um, column going higher. Okay. So in the fight between the Dogecoin, okay, for between buyers and sellers for Dogecoin, the buyers are already winning right now. That is why you see them, you know, going higher and higher why the sellers are losing, okay? So this actually fluctuates. So before you know it, the sellers will win again, all right? And the, the buyers will lose before you know it. So this is a fight between the bulls and the bears. So that is basically what it is. So um, you can equally use this to, you know, look at it and say, oh, right now the market is an, in an uptrend or so, okay? And then it will definitely reverse. But so when you look at this, you come back to your chart and then look at the RSI. It was ever it gives you, you can, you know, use it to make decisions in the market as well. So that is what it simply means. Okay, this is uh, the actions the buyers are taking and then the, the that of the sellers. Okay, anyone that is bigger, it means that they are the ones who, who are having um, a higher trading volume compared to the other, um, the other people or so, the other party. Okay. What's the best time frame to use when um, using the RSI? All of the time frame are best. It all depends on the mode of trading you want to go. If you are scalping the market, use five minutes at most, fifteen minutes. Okay. If you are um, going to trade, you know, like the swing trading. Swing trading are those trades that will take days or even a week before you it, it hits your target. Okay, then you can use. Um, one hour, four hours, um, daily time frame, um, even one week time frame. You can equally use do your analysis on the weekly time frame. Okay, so all the time frame are good. All the time frames are good, um, but it all depends on whether you want to scalp the market, okay, or you want to go into swing trading. So it depends. Uh, you now use the time frame that you want. Okay. All right, so um, uh, Mr. Dan, this will be the last question for today. Okay, we we'll still have another section tomorrow, so um, go ahead okay, and ask sir. the question. Okay, thank you, sir. So I just I want to make a kind of appeal. That if you can, if it can be possible to record this and send it to our platform so that we can go back to it for emphasis. What's that? The record for the lesson. Okay, yes, I, I will try to make it available. 